Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. From around the 1890s, a new type of vessel entered Navy service. The torpedo boat destroyer was born, later to be called simply a destroyer. These vessels were designed to negate the threat of torpedo boats, but have evolved to be the most common warship in service today, with varying roles. In the U.S. Navy, the destroyer fleet comprises advanced warships that can perform both offensive and defensive missions. The two main types are the Arleigh Burke DDG-51 and Zumwalt DDG-1000 destroyers. Their modern sensors and weapon systems improve fleet operations and help with anti-air, anti-submarine, and surface warfare. Arleigh Burke class has recently been given midlife updates to make it more useful for its missions. With its stealth features and high-tech weapons, the Zumwalt class solves important gaps in naval warfare for future threats. Their construction begins in massive shipyards like Bath Iron Works in Maine or Huntington Ingalls in Mississippi, where modular building techniques are used to streamline the process. Instead of constructing the ship as a single unit, the vessel is assembled in sections or modules. Each module is outfitted with piping, wiring, and equipment before being joined with others to form the complete whole. Once assembled, the hull is moved to a dry dock, where it undergoes outfitting with radar systems, combat electronics, and propulsion units. One of the most critical components installed is the Aegis combat system, which gives the destroyer its powerful multi-mission capability. After construction and outfitting are complete, the ship undergoes rigorous dockside and sea trials to ensure all systems perform to Navy standards. Any necessary adjustments are made before commissioning. Space is limited in ships that are just over 505 feet long, with over 300 sailors aboard. Sailors sleep on beds resembling large wall racks, also called racks. Their only privacy is a small curtain, and they have space for their personal belongings in a small space that forms part of the rack. Every Arleigh Burke class destroyer has a gym, but its space is limited and always cramped. These areas are necessary because the culinary specialists tend to cook up a storm thrice daily. The quality and presentation of the food keep the crew's morale up. We got mozzie sticks. We ain't got no mozzie sticks. We got jalapeno poppers. Pizza. Some za. There are still many other specialist jobs aboard these destructive vessels, from gunner's mates to electrician's mates. All these people become family, and each one ensures the ship remains fighting ready. Fires aboard warships are a big issue. Not only are these vessels cramped, but they are also filled with fuel and explosives. When a fire does break out, 
General quarters are called, meaning all personnel have to man their stations. Start. Sailors in firefighting gear are on the front line of fighting these fires with fire extinguishers and fire hoses. White smoke, white smoke. Thermal imagers are used to see through the smoke because visibility is almost always zero. One of the main features of the DDGs is their Seahawk helicopters. These aircraft are kept in an aft deck hangar while they take off and land on the flight deck. Dedicated flight deck personnel control takeoff and landings and are responsible for removing wheel chocks and tie down chains from the aircraft just before takeoff. On a DGG-51, people working in the flight deck do very careful evolutions to make sure that helicopter activities are safe. As part of their job, they must prepare the flight deck, guide helicopters during takeoff and landing, use deck locks to keep the plane safe, and oversee repair and refueling while working with the ship's air traffic control. Sailors are expected to perform their specialist tasks and must stand watch as well. After months at sea, the hard routine can become quite taxing. To break the routine, activities such as steel beach picnics are held. During these events, the crew takes a break from the strict military routine, dons civilian clothes, and takes part in fun activities on deck. Amid the activities, one of the mess facilities is usually chosen to prepare meals and have a barbecue on the deck of the vessel. The small break in monotony has a much larger positive effect on the morale of the crew. One of the main weapons on destroyers is the torpedo. These weapons are surface launched and then dive to find their underwater targets using various types of guidance. Sonar is the main means of guidance, but the type of sonar can vary, and it can be the torpedo's own sonar or that of another source. During surface warfare advanced tactical training, or SWAT, in the Philippine Sea, Sailors from the USS Ralph Johnson, an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile cruiser, load torpedoes. SWAT gives the fleet the chance to do the combat training required to improve the efficiency of their jobs. Of all the systems tested for the launching of missiles from destroyers, the Vertical Launch System, or VLS, was found to be the most effective. Designated the Mark 41 VLS, it can fire 14 types of munitions from Tomahawk missiles to Nolka active decoys. The vertical launch system is a rapid response missile launcher found on many U.S. Navy ships. It consists of vertical cell modules that house missiles and are managed by a central computer. Each cell enables independent targeting and launching, allowing simultaneous multi-mission capabilities like anti-air, anti-surface, and attack missions, assuring versatile and constant battle readiness. An Arling Burke-class guided missile destroyer has another trump card, the 5-inch, 127mm MK45 Mod half lightweight gun. 
The MK-45 mod lightweight cannon is intended for surface, air, and shore bombardment tasks. The MK-45 can fire 16 to 20 rounds per minute and has a maximum range of approximately 13 to 20 nautical miles. It includes a completely automated loading system and a computer-controlled targeting system called the Aegis Combat System, or ACS. Aegis integrates all weapons aboard the destroyer for the most effective layered defense. It's not always action and the smell of cordite for the sailors aboard these ships. Much of their daily lives are monotonous, including routine maintenance tasks, such as performing maintenance of lifelines on the deck of the vessel. Routine maintenance for DDG-51s also include examining systems like propulsion, radar, weapons, and electronic modules. Crews do daily inspections, lubricate moving components, update software, and follow preventative maintenance plans to guarantee operational readiness and equipment longevity. Maintenance also helps the crew develop better discipline, which is critical for such a compact and integrated unit of personnel. Occasionally, the vessel's hull must be exposed for maintenance or repair of damage. Dry docking an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer entails positioning the vessel on a floating dock or static dock, which is subsequently evacuated of water. This procedure facilitates comprehensive examination and upkeep of the hole beneath the waterline, propellers, and further subaqueous elements. Critical responsibilities encompass hole cleaning, painting, structural repairs, and evaluating and rectifying damage. This thorough process guarantees the vessel is in its best fighting shape. Dry dock maintenance phases, performed biennially for vessels such as the Arleigh Burke class destroyers, constitute a thorough refurbishment to guarantee sustained operational efficacy. This procedure entails completely elevating the vessel from the sea for comprehensive examination and repairs. Essential tasks encompass hull cleaning and repainting, propulsion system overhauls, structural component inspections and repairs, and enhancements to electronic and weapon systems. Specialists assess usually submerged components, including propellers and shafts, for deterioration. The dry dock phase is essential for identifying latent problems, executing technological enhancements, and guaranteeing the vessel's preparedness for prolonged operational intervals. From the days when they simply intercepted torpedo boats, the guided missile destroyer of today is often referred to as a Swiss Army knife of the U.S. Navy because of the number of missions it can perform. From destroying submarines to sinking ships much larger than itself to engaging aerial targets at long range and at great speed. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.